welcome to the Mediocre Cover Band Guitar Guy. Um, before I even get started, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, the old fellow would appreciate it. Or at least click a like, leave a comment, uh, keep it all in the guidelines, all that, yada, yada, yada. Alright, so, I did a video looking at country music. A little less than a year ago, I guess, probably. And uh, we talked about how it's after morphing into the 90s pop music. It all sounds like... Somebody walked into a hit factory and found some boys to men crumbs on the floor and then just added a southern accent and some twanginess. Not even so much the twanginess anymore because it's all pretty much overdrive. Uh, almost like a Les Paul Marshall overdrive driven sort of country sound. And it's like I said in that video, I understand country's done some changes over the years. The guys in the 50s didn't like the guys in the 60s. The guys in the 60s didn't like the guys in the 70s. The guys in the 70s didn't like the people from the 80s. 80s, 90s, 2000s, whatever, it all started, you know. But the thing that was consistent with country, up until probably the mid-2000s, is that it was still selling units. It was still selling physical copies. That and gospel music, right? It wasn't as downloaded. People were still enjoying it. But it's not so much now. Uh, sales are dwindling. It's become Spotify. Um... And if you're in Nashville now, I know friends of mine who uh, were on the road a while ago with uh, a guy who did a lot of session work for uh, Nashville and was Buck Owens' guitar player, Eugene Moles. They, um, he was saying that if you don't have financial backing now in, in Nashville, you're kind of screwed. Uh, even more so than talent. And uh, you know what? It's really evident right now, more so than ever. Um, I had the somewhat, but what, I don't know, we call it a country radio station here in St. John's and, and surrounding areas. It's got shitty reception, it's got a weak whatever, trans, I don't even know what to fucking call the shit. And all of a sudden, when I turn it on and I'm listening away, I hear a... And I'm like, oh wow, they're going to play some David Bowie on the country station. But it wasn't, it was a guy named Chris Young doing a song, um, Young Love and Saturday Nights. But before they played the song, uh, this morning when I heard it on my way home, um, the commercial for the song, there was a lady who said, uh, it's really fresh, it sounds like nothing that I've ever heard before. Well, obviously you didn't listen to the radio before, uh, because it's an entire song written by David Bowie, they just changed the lyrics. Now, there are some subtle changes with the choruses, it's more... Um, <laughs> And then it gets kind of to a pre-chorus, it just goes up to A, I believe, and then it goes back into that sort of, not the identical riff, but it's going more, uh, the melody is going more into the whole Rebel Rebel thing. So a friend of mine says to me, well, you got to realize, you know, rap and hip-hop were sampling music for ages. And they were, but they were using little tidbits, they were using little pieces and choruses and things like that, you know, P. Diddy with the whole police, every breath you take and all that stuff. But he didn't use the whole... The whole song. And then Dustin Lynch and Jelly Roll go into this other song. I think it's called Chevrolet. I'm not sure. It's about dirt roads and Chevrolets. And it's the whole literal um, Dolby Gray song. Give me the beat, boy. You know, uh, Drift Away. It's literally the whole song with the lyrics changed. And that, to me, is crazy. Like, So what's happening to originality? Like, Country music just seems to be dwindling down and down and down worse than like rock and roll. And people will always say that no matter what song you're listening to in rock and roll, it was probably written 30 years ago. And uh, because you're using the same chords. And I realize there's only so much you got to work with after, you know, 60, 70 years of music. Uh, whatever we're into now. Uh, since Elvis uh, came along, you know. But... I don't know, do you guys have a problem with it? I kind of do. I think that, even you know, you should try. I think going into, I mean, and I know they had to buy the rights, they just couldn't go in and record the songs and steal the music, uh, because then there'd be lawsuits, kind of like the whole uh, Tom Petty thing there a while ago, it won't back down, and, and you know, Led Zeppelin were being sued, uh, and things like that, ZZ Top for Lagrange, you know, um, for copyright or whatever, and poor old John Fogarty was sued for plagiarizing his own song, a song he wrote and then did Old Man Down the Road, and then they were like, no, that's Green River, we're gonna sue you, you know, your, your previous record company and, and bandmates. Anyway, and I realized they had to get, you know, permission to do that, but are the estates of these, these people, are they 
that desperate for money or are they just letting it go or maybe they don't own the rights to the songs and whatever. It's also great if like it bought attention back to David Bowie, but the thing with the new country stuff right now is that it's a hit for a few weeks and then it's just so forgettable for the most part and which is unfortunate you know we're never going to see those days of like the Merle Haggards and Waylon Jennings and, and even in the, in the 90s Alan Jackson's the Reba McIntyre's and all those bands uh, the, the, you know the legacy acts that are around now we're not going to see those probably um, we're not going to see the new generation have that longevity as those acts that's where I'm trying to go sorry and uh, you know and I realize that Nashville is a town of songwriters and um, and everything and, and you don't always write your own things and even if you do you had help they had to put somebody else's name on there or they had to help you change something right but we should try to at least keep some originality in music guys instead of actually like I said ripping off a whole song um, and just changing the lyrics over that's that's crazy so that's my opinion again today, and not trying to be negative because I was accused of that a while ago, focusing too much on negativity in my videos. And yes, I do point out negative things in these videos because I try to let positivity creep through that shit. And I like to point that out that these are things that shouldn't be happening that are, that are. I'm bringing it to people's attention. The whole mediocre cover band guitar guy thing was about people getting into music and what to expect. And everybody thinks it's, you know, and I got an email from a guy one time and said, it's, your channel is redundant, it's uh, useless. Put a band together, learn your songs, go get gigs. It's not that simple, folks. It's not that simple. Because you're going to hear no more than yes, all that bullshit. But anyway, that's, that's where the negativity comes from. I'm just showing you the pitfalls here of what's going on out there and what you can expect. And, uh, you know, that's got nothing to do with my video, but that was a comment that I've been struggling with the last little bit. It wasn't a bad comment, but I've been trying to figure out a rebuttal. So anyway, guys, uh, once again, thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate the people who uh, keep chiming in. Once again, I'm just sharing my opinion here. It doesn't mean it's necessarily right. It's just my opinion. Maybe some people love the fact that these old songs are being dug up and, and used. And I'm sure young folks, you know, you the whole rebel rebel thing and that whole riff is uh, very jumpable and shaking your ass and all that stuff kind of thing and the Dolby Grey tune is a singer man that that really is like put up your drink and and sing but sing to the original sing the Dolby Grey is drift away okay not this this jelly roll stuff all right guys thank you very much